In a world full of boring stories, bad videos, and marketing misinformation, one very tall man with a weird last name will use his microphone. Is on? Use his video marketing knowledge. It's the red button, right? And use his friends. Please be on the show. To change that. You are listening to The Garlic Marketing Show with Ian. What? No, that's how you pronounce it. Well, if you say so, your host, Ian Garlic. Welcome to another Garlic Marketing Show. Today, we're going to talk about an important topic for all business owners, all members of businesses on selling and acquiring businesses. And we've got an expert joining us today from Tel Aviv, Israel, Moran Pober. Thank you very much for being on. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited to have you too. So, I mean, this is an interesting topic because, um, you know, I, I was at a friend's mastermind and we were talking about it and I came to this realization that so few of us, all of us design our businesses to and do our marketing to just get the next dollar. When really you should be designing your business to get acquired, correct? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And, I, I, and how do you do that? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think before that even, just the fact that most people out there, and, and I can't blame it because if you're looking at the books out there and seminars and business coaches, they're teaching everyone about how to start a business. So you see many people just, at least nowadays, it's become really popular to have the dream of starting a business, becoming the next Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever. And people don't understand that in order to become the next Facebook, I mean, to become the next Facebook or WhatsApp, it's almost as hard, if not harder, than to become like the next Michael Jordan or LeBron James or something like that. It's really, like your chances are really, really low. And people are, I see people wasting their life savings and sometimes their families' savings as well just to start a business that um, they, they got many chances for you to fail. I mean, most businesses fail within the first five or 10 years, like 90% or so. I, I don't remember the exact stats, but around 90% of businesses fail within the first five years. And those who make it in, in the first five years, around 90% of those fail within the first 10 years. So all I'm saying, all I'm trying to, to give people is just showing them that there's another option. Um, and even if you have a successful business, I mean, only one out of 13 businesses will actually sell. And I'm talking about businesses who list themselves as wanting to sell with a broker or something like that. So um, just talking about a few of those stats to begin with, just to, to give people a broad overview on what's going on out there in the business world. Yeah, that's a, it, it's a very interesting point because so many people just get into business because they want to be in business for themselves, but don't think of it from this aspect. And no one thinks they're going to be one of those 5% or one of those 90% that fails. But in fact, I mean, the law of averages say that. Um, and I want to get to, you know, I want to get your tips on how to prevent that. I want to, get your t- I want to see what you look for in buying a business um, and also how, how you go about buying a business. But first, I want to know, how did you get involved in this? Um, how did you get involved in this world of buying and acquiring businesses? Yeah, so um, it's actually funny. I came to this world literally by accident just by watching TV shows like Shark Tank and Dragons then for the UK and, and Canadian version. And now there's The Profit as well with uh, Marcus Lemonis. So just seeing some of those TV shows made me realize, hey, I, I want to do the same because I, I had... I had businesses before that I ran day to day and one day I just realized, Hey, I don't like to run the day to day of a business. I don't like to deal with menial stuff. I don't like to deal with repeatable stuff. Um, I want to own the business. I don't want to manage the business. And I decided that I just like to deal with the, uh, the people side of things. I like to call the shots. I like to manage the, the overall vision of the business, but I don't like to deal with the day to day um, decision making so for me it just led me to go out and seek mentors um, I'm very fortunate to, to have amazing amazing mentors some of them are, are, are literally almost billionaires um, anywhere from people who have been CEOs of public companies to head of M&A's of public companies m is uh, merger and acquisitions and I'm still in very 
I have very good relationship with some partners in, in the venture capital world. So I was just really fortunate and I, I worked hard to find some of those mentors who could show me the way, show me what they're doing. And yeah, that's what led me to do what I'm doing right now. Well, how did you go about finding mentors? Because I think finding mentors is super important, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Yeah, I agree 100%. And I will say that do whatever it takes, first of all. It really depends on how much you want that. Um, in the end of the day, it lacks, like everything in life, I mean, it's, it's a numbers game. And many of, many of the people you reach out to, they, they won't say anything. Um, but some people w- would love... Especially, I think I think just the biggest thing is find a way to add value to people. For me, I mean, I had people that I, um, in quotes, worked for free for more than a year before I did anything with them, um, just to have the option to be around them. That's all. Like literally, I was. I remember one of the guys I'm working with. I went every week to meet him in his offices, and I told him, "Hey, whatever you need, I'm sure you have tons of things to do. I'm sure you hate." part of those things that you need to do every day just just give it to me and and teach me throughout the process what i need to do um so so those some of those things like i had people who i just i literally just emailed or called and told them hey uh, i really like your work i like xyz and i'd love to invite you to to a lunch or a dinner or anything like that and some people will say no but some people will say yes i mean who who don't like i mean for me even right now personally if someone tell me hey man um, I'd love to invite you to, to a lunch on me. Um, I just want to talk to you for 30, 60 minutes. I mean, I'll say yes to that. If it's close to me and it's nearby and my schedule allowed it. I mean, obviously, sometimes I won't. But especially if someone could add value to me, I mean, why not? So I would just say um, go out, look for someone who, who is where you want to be a few years from now. And just find a way to add value to him. And sometimes buying a lunch is, is a great way to just add value. Um, I, I think that's a great point, adding value, but also adding so much value saying, I'll do whatever it takes because people will, uh, especially at that level will respect it and pay attention to you because there's so many people out there that just want to take, take, take right away. It's like, Hey, will you be my mentor? And I want you to mentor me and tell me what to do without providing value first. Yeah. And I think really important to just add to that is just don't be needy. Uh, it's so crucial. Uh, so many people out there, and I'm getting emails like that as well. Hey, man, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, I'll work hard. But they're too needy. It, it looks like they can't be independent. And mm-hmm. I think it's crucial. Show that you have your, I mean, show that you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, Just show that you're a man that you don't really need that mentor. But tell him, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to learn, and I'm willing to work hard. Um, so if you want, I'm, I'm happy to be around you and add value to your life. That's the attitude you should have. Awesome. That's a great attitude. Um, so tell me about like your first, uh, what's your, tell me some stories about this business deals because obviously every one of them isn't perfect. What's, uh, let's talk about the bad one because a lot, we always talk about the good things, right? Well, it's, can you tell me an example of one that just didn't work out and you're like, oh man, why did I do that? Because that, that, those are the ones that really interest me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I got tons of those stories. <laughs> it's just where, just where you want to start. Um, I had few businesses that failed because um, they were dependent on Google or Apple. I had an app that was in the top 100 apps in the App Store for in more than 100 countries. That Apple one day just came to me and told me, "Hey, sorry, we got our own version for the app now, and you can't be here anymore." I had um, a website that is basically very similar to BuzzFeed. Uh, we were just um, creating viral content and we had um, just ads on, on the website and like 80% of the, the revenue on that website came from, from Google AdSense and one day they just shut down our accounts with a few hundred thousands in there. Um, what else? I had marketing agency that was mostly doing SEO for businesses and uh, I mean I'm talking a few years ago where Google literally made new changes to their algorithm every two three months so i mean imagine clients who are paying you a few thousands a month and one day their websites are just their ranking are just down from page one to page 100 so all sorts of stories (laughs) but um i mean you learn from them all you learn from that all and i think uh, you need to learn to just focus and enjoying uh, focus on on the journey in the end of the day i mean you're gonna have ups and downs no matter what 
it, it just learning from it and finding finding the time and, and just the I guess for me right now the biggest lesson is just being smart and understanding that no no matter what business you're going to be in there's you're going to have the, those ups and downs so, so just remember to take some money out and and spread your um you just spread your eggs in different baskets. I think that's that's an important lesson that I learned. Okay, so uh, that's an important, uh, interesting thing. So, you know, on one side, I hear from a lot of people that you should put all of your business into one basket. And you know, you look at and you look at like Jim Collins, good to great. Uh, my buddy Vinny Fisher talk about the hedge hog philosophy. Really, just getting really focused on one thing. So, what do you mean by that? Then, if you're gonna um, spread it out but stay focused as a business yeah so first of all it really depends on on where you're at in life right now um i agree that especially if you're just starting out you got to focus on one thing and make it successful i mean i see many people who look or out there looking to start a business and they work on a business for two months it's not working well and they're going to start a new business I mean, <laughs> that's 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 not spreading your eggs in different baskets right it's just yeah. being uh, idiots <laughs> but um uh, for me right now at least if I have so let's say you have one main source of income that's making you good money um, one thing that I learned from my mentor is don't invest all that profit or whatever you're making from that main income source just back into that business but try to spread that money into different investment opportunities so let's say you have um, e-commerce business or agency or manufacturer or, or whatever business you have at the moment if you're making some money from that, don't invest all that money back into the business. Either just first of all take money home, and secondly, that money that you're taking home, go and try and invest that into different things. Um, so that's the way that at least I see that uh, spreading myself into different baskets. I do agree that you need to be focused. I think focus is key to be successful. Um, for me, at least what I'm doing right now, that the reason that I like it too much is because it's, it's literally the perfect business for, for someone who's ADP and like to be involved in many things. I, I still have my focus, which is going out there and buying businesses, but I have the opportunity to be involved in different sectors. So I'm kind of like ADD by learning about tons of different sectors and businesses. At the same time, I do have my main, main focus, which is I'm out there to buy a business, to do deals. So that's all my focus. At the same time, um, because I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day operations, I can be involved in many, many industries and kind of like spread myself uh, at the same time. Interesting. So um, when you are looking at a business to purchase, what are some of the things that you're looking for in a business that you're you're going to buy? What, what what industry? What what are the qualities of the business? Is it just cash flow? Um, talk tell me about that. Yeah. So for me at the moment, I'm looking for businesses doing at least one million a year in sales, and the reason for that is first of all because of um, usually smaller businesses than that are highly dependent on on the owner. Uh, I mean, you could say that the bare minimum would bare minimum business I'd look at is business doing half a million a year in sales. Mm -hmm. Below that, usually the business is just highly, highly dependent on one person. Yep. And if I'm going to buy that business and that person is going to leave, there, there's basically no business. I mean, everything is with him. Um, so that's the first thing. It's obviously, for me, a lot got to do with the financials. So like you just said, it's all about what kind of returns I'm getting. Um as far as industries, I'm happy to look at any deal in pretty much any industry. Um, there's specific industries that I like. Um, and the reason for that, I just like asset-rich businesses because I could um, just leverage financial institutions to help me with acquiring those businesses if they got lots of assets on the balance sheet. So, for example, I could get from a bank much more money for, let's say, an engineering company who got lots of assets, machineries, uh, many times accounts receivables with their clients versus, let's say, a SaaS company that potentially maybe got much more growth potential. Um, but at the same time, at least for me, where my cost of capital it could be much higher. So just a few of those personal criteria that I'm looking at. Uh, obviously, I like someone who's motivated to sell the business. Um, I don't want to pay premium for a business. I'm not the, um, the only business or a person who will buy a business for a premium would be um, someone many times just a public company who got a report for their 
uh, shareholders to, to meet their demands. For me, I don't care about that. So I, I'm, I'm just looking for good deals um, who will bring in good cash flow. Um, and yeah, those, you could say those are the main criteria. Um, so if, if someone owns a business and they, they want one day to sell it, what are the first few things that you would suggest that they would do? Um, I would say track and document every process that you have. So when you're going to sell the business, make sure that the business is not dependent on one person. Or let's say if one of the employees is going to leave, make sure it's replaceable. I think that's crucial, crucial, crucial. Um, now it really depends. Obviously, if you want to get more money for the business, there's a few steps that you could take in order to, to get better valuation. Um, things like even just what I just mentioned, the fact that it's dependent highly on, on you as the owner is it's crucial for the valuation of the business. Things like having re- return revenue. If you can prove to the buyer that next year you're going to have um, specific a certain amount of sales you could ask more for the business um, there's a few more things um, I'd say obviously making sure your financials are, are all big dead and, and organized you don't want to you know if, if I'm going to buy your business I don't want to see the financials written in a hand, handwritten letters um, <laughs> so a so few, few things that are just basic business um, uh, systems you could say that you want to make sure are, are, are in order um, when when you're a, a business owner is looking to sell the business, I, I would also uh, just emphasize the fact that you want to make sure you know who the buyer is. And at least personally, when I'm looking to buy a business, I'm trying to position myself as much as I can as the safe pair of hand because I know that, and I heard horror stories from people who are looking to sell their business and they have a competitor telling them, hey, I want to buy your business. And during that period of investigating and doing their due diligence on buying that business, they literally destroy it. Um, and by that, I mean they're stealing clients, they're stealing employees. And as a business owner, you want to make sure that, that no one is doing that. So that's crucial. Just make sure you know that person who want to buy the business from you, or at least you build some rapport with him for a while and know kind of like what his motives are. Um, that's at least personally what I'm, that's my main focus when I'm talking to a business owner. Um, literally that's, that's my main, main focus to build rapport and show him, Hey, I've been in your shoes. I've been a business owner. And I know that when I was the owner of business and I managed the day to day, um, that business was like a baby to me and my employees were like my family and the brand that I built, my track record, all that are really important to me. So I try to put the same to show people that I understand them and I've been there and that I'll do the best to give them the best offer I can. Awesome. Um, so if someone wants to do something like this, I mean, we talked a little bit before the call, um, you know, maybe, maybe there's people out there that just sold their business. I kind of want to get into the, the, just like you're saying, just owning the business, not running the business. How, how would someone go about that and learning how to do that? So, in the end of the day, you could you could just try and do that yourself. Literally, just go out there, talk to businesses, and try to negotiate things. Um, if you want to find someone with some experience, then feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to. I'm at a point right now where I'm. I have a goal to buy around. My goal is to buy 100 businesses over the next five years. So I'm happy to literally give equity to people who will help me and will help me to find deals so those people who will help me to find deals could basically watch my back and, and just see what i do and based on that just learn the process if they want and let's say that they help me find one deal the second deal they could just do themselves that's a pretty generous offer that's a great offer um uh so how would someone go about getting a hold a hold of you um yeah just feel free to email me personally i'm my personal email is just my name moan m-o-r-a-n at um my company name abdassets.com and uh if you click in the show notes you'll be able to uh email moran um so moran tell me a little bit about um what you do after you get these businesses you know it, uh, how did you grow them do you merge them uh t- tell me a little bit about that how do you make money yeah so first of all what you just mentioned about Merging businesses. Most people don't even know that that the terminology. Um, so 
that's a main main thing. So if you have an existing business, um, I can obviously talk about everything that everyone knows, which is like growing by sales and marketing and cutting costs and all that stuff. But because I know many people just don't talk about it, I'll, I want to mention, I guess, the growing by acquisition phase. So even if someone got existing business, many people out there think the only way to grow is just by increasing sales, increasing revenues or cutting costs. Um, I think the best way to grow is actually by go out there and buy more companies in your industries. Like you can grow in years worth of sales um, literally in an afternoon by buying your competitor or another business in the sector. So, for example, if you have existing business doing one million year in sales and you go out there buy another business doing one million year in sales, you're going to have two million a year in sales business from the moment you bought that business. And to reach that growth organically is going to be much harder. Not only that, but as soon as you bought another business, you, especially obviously if it's a business in, in your sector and industry, you're going to have tons of cross-selling opportunities and synergies. So, for example, if you have your existing business, you have your list of clients, your list of products, the business you just bought, they have a unique list of their clients and many times their unique uh, list of products and you could have tons of synergies and cross-selling opportunities between them and that's a huge use upsides that usually goes directly to the bottom line to the profit so um, that's the best way best best way to grow a business um, if you look at the biggest companies right now that's the way they grow um, like facebook and and all the big ones that's what they do they go out there and buy businesses they go and buy whatsapp they go and buy instagram because they can't do the same organically. They can't just grow Facebook alone at the same rate as if they just go and buy a different big businesses. And that's the best, best way to grow and to meet their shareholders' um, demands. I mean, it, it, I think that's a really cool, it's a, essentially, it's a marketing strategy, right? Uh, is acquisition. But I mean, can any size business do that? Uh, you know, if I have a million dollar business, can I go out and acquire another million dollar business? Yeah, 100%. And that's another thing. People are just not aware of that because, um, like I said, most of the books, seminar courses out there, they're talking about starting something from scratch. But if you look, for example, at the world of, like, the world of private equity, for example, that's something that existed for many, many years. Um, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with uh, uh, RGR Nabisco. I think there's a, there's even a, a movie about it with um, KKR or both. Um, Back then, I think the biggest company in the world, and they didn't use a single dollar of their own pocket. Like they bought a billion dollar company without spending a single dollar of their own money. And the way they do it, and the way you can do it with whatever existing business you have, is you go out there, you look for a business you want to buy, and the way you basically do that is you ask for financials. So. I'll just go briefly to, throughout the process. You go, you look for a business you want to buy, you get in touch with the owner, obviously you build rapport, you tell him um, why you want to buy, you tell him about your plans for the business and the next step is to just get access to the information of that business with just like getting, you know, basic financials, p &L, balance sheet, all that stuff. As soon as I have that basic information, I can go to many, many financial institutions out there that all their job is to lend me money using the business assets as collateral and we're using the business assets that we're looking to buy as collateral you don't need to use your own personal assets as collateral you can't but you don't have to which means that you can go out there and uh, in theory you can buy any business any size just by leveraging the business assets to um to basically finance the acquisition costs wow i, I mean and, and that's amazing i mean it's a lot cheaper than Spending a ton of money on marketing, isn't it? <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. <That's> exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so uh, you know, it, it, let's say you know I had a company. What and you, let's say you owned a company, right? And you wanted to grow your your business that way. You know, besides financials, how would you decide what business that you want to target? Yeah, good, great question. So, for example. Um, Let's take a simple business. Let's say you have a marketing agency, or, mm -hmm. or let's say you have let's say you have a web design company, right? So mm -hmm. you're selling websites to companies, and you have let's say a list of 100 clients. You're selling websites for what five anywhere from five to 50 grand for a website, mm -hmm. and your business is doing one million a year in sales. Uh, let's say around 200 thousand profit, 
and you're not sure how to keep growing that business, right? You can go out there and try and do more sales and marketing, hiring more salespeople, and that's great. Don't get me wrong, this is great to still do that. At the same time, you can go out there and find a company that is doing, let's say, social media, uh, advertising, social media promotions or any of that stuff. Let's say that company, like I said, is doing also one million year in sales. They have a list of their 100 clients and you can offer to buy them. Uh, many times, many of those companies get got assets on their balance sheet. So, for example, a social media agency probably going to have tons of accounts receivables. And that's a great assets that you could leverage from, from financial institutions and get around 80% of, of whatever on the, or on the receivables books you have. Um, and I hope I don't overwhelm. If I overwhelm, just tell me. No, I'll try to no so. that's great. <laughs> this is great information. Yeah. I've, got, I've got smart yeah. listeners. They love it. <laughs> okay, great. So um, you, you can go with that with the receivables books to finan- to financial institution. Um, you can get anywhere from 80 to sometimes even 90 plus percent. Depends on the, on the quality of the receivables. You get that and then you start your neg- negotiation. So let's say if a bank, a financial institution told me, hey, Moran, you can raise... 500,000 based on the assets that I got. I now know that I can pay that business, that social media agency, up to $500,000 at, at completion, right? At closing. The day we close the deal, I can pay them up to $500,000. Um, now you'll tell me that business might be worth more. And yes, it, it depends. Yes or no. It depends on, first of all, your negotiation and what kind of price you get to agree on. But let's say you need to pay more. The, the way you do that, so you have two options. One of them is you can just bring in money from home if you want or from other investors. Uh, but the second thing, and that's what we call, that's that's why you call that, that, that process a leverage buyout, is that let's say we have another certain amount of money to pay. We spread that over a few years using the, basically the business cash flow to finance that acquisition. And, and there's many ways to structure that deal as well. You can structure it via earn out agreements or deferred considerations or or it's very similar to real estate, basically, when, when a seller are doing seller financing. So same goes here. Um, and yeah, and as soon as you bought it, that business is yours 100%. And I'll just add and say, many times you don't even have to buy that business with money. You could just go to a business and tell them and, and just do a merger. And, and merger without you buying them, you could do that for free. You can go out there and, and literally sell the story um, which I, we just talked about, you could go to the social media agency owner and tell him, hey, man, um, we could combine our businesses and instead of you owning uh, 100% of uh, of a $1 million business, you could own 50% of $2 million a year business. And I don't know if, if you understand it, but owning 50% of $2 million a year business is better than owning 100% of $1 million a year business. And the reason for that is because if you're going to sell your business today, your business is going to be worth much more if you're making two million versus if you're making one million. And I'm talking different multiples. Like you could sell a business and doing one million a year in sales for multiples or of anywhere between two to usually three times multiples your EBITDA, your pre-tax profit. When you have a bigger business, we could talk about multiples of up to ten sometimes. So that means your share value worth much much more just by being part of a group, a bigger group. Um, so yeah, that's another <laughs> another thought and idea that you could go and implement immediately. Wow, these are awesome, awesome ideas, uh, and a lot of them. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people want to get in touch with you, uh, Moran at abdassets.com. They can just shoot you an email, which is really generous, um, and I'm sure a few people will. Um, Moran, what's the you know you've been in marketing. Before you've, you told me about SEO, etc. What's your? What do you see as the next big marketing channel or a big marketing tip? Being that you're involved in so many companies, um, it's funny. I, I'm actually researching this this week. It looks like the the boot, the Facebook boot thing, is going amazingly well. I mean, and I think that the biggest potential here is just the fact that. I don't know anyone who's not reading 100% of their Facebook Messenger messages. Yeah. It's like insane, 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 insane. Just thinking about the fact that, you know, having email autoresponders, what you get, what kind of open rate, if you get in 5, 10%, I mean, you're doing good. And I think that's a great, great opportunity that we got to use really, really, really fast before, you know, people start to spam that, that uh, Messenger inbox as well. 
Yeah, I'm surprised more people aren't using it. You know, it, 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 it is. I mean, we have it everywhere, and we're using it all the time, and it's really cool. And it's a great way to get right in front of people. Uh, but I, I'd love to have you back once you learn a little bit more about it and use it in your companies. 100%. Awesome. I'd love to. Awesome. Well, Moran, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, and if anyone wants to learn more about them, abdassets.com. Uh, Moran Pobert, thank you so much. Thanks for all the awesome information. No worries. Thank you very much for having me again. All right. And thank you all for listening and taking Moran and I on your journey. This is Ian Garlic, and you've been listening to The Garlic Marketing Show. That's it for The Garlic Marketing Show. If you want to get the inside scoop and the latest techniques, make sure to follow Ian Garlic on Facebook.